Thank you. Please be seated. Nice to have a full, uh, somewhat full room again. Okay. Uh, first item on the agenda is number three, uh, 392, uh, appointment firefighter paramedic, Chief Patterson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, this evening, uh, the Burlington Fire Department has uh, one vacancy that we're looking to fill. Uh, this evening, I'm recommending Joshua Landry for appointment to the Burlington Fire Department. Uh, Joshua first approached us back in November uh, seeking a potential lateral transfer uh, to Burlington um, from another fire department. Uh, he has four years of firefighter paramedic experience working with the Rockland Mass Fire Department. He comes highly recommended by all his co-workers at the Rockland Fire Department, uh, including uh, Fire Chief Scott Duffy, who's a personal friend of mine. Um, they, they, they're, Certainly not pleased to see him uh, seek a lateral transfer to our community. Just be quiet. Oh. So Joshua, uh, he uh, graduated from the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy in Stowe in uh, 2018, uh, where he earned his Firefighter 1-2 certification, as well as his Hazmat Operational Level uh, Responder certification. He attended Mass Bay Community College in Framingham, Mass, where he completed his paramedic training program. He's currently a National Registry and Mass Certified EMT paramedic. He has advanced cardiovascular life support and pediatric advanced life support certified. Prior to working at the Rockland Fire Department, he was em employed as a paramedic at Cataldo Ambulance Service. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, he, he served briefly uh, with the U.S. Forestry Service in Arizona as a wildland firefighter. Uh, he's continued his education and earned his Bachelor of Science degree in emergency medical care from Western Carolina University uh, in 2021. Uh, I would highly recommend Joshua Landry for appointment to firefighter paramedic uh, for the town of Burlington Fire Department. Thank you, Chief Patterson. Mr. Zagarino. No, thank you, Chief. Uh, with the Chief's recommendation, I appoint Joshua Landry to the position of firefighter paramedic in the Burlington Fire Department and ask that the board waive its 15-day waiting period. So moved. Second. Move and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. 4 0, zero. Waive. Welcome aboard. <laughs> I said immediately, so I wasn't. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Bye, Jim. Jim. Okay. Item uh, 393 on the agenda is appointment of the DPW, Mr. Sanchez. Good evening. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for having us here tonight. We're very excited today to actually introduce two uh, uh, new members of our department, which hopefully uh, they'll be appointed tonight. Um, Matt Davis, who is here present, as well as some of the other members of the department. And I uh, had interviews last week for the position of laborer for the water and sewer division. <coughs> if you remember, this position was created uh, in the past to allow our employees to start at an entry level and hopefully move up within the department to other jobs. And that has actually happened uh, within our department. So this creates openings uh, for new personnel, which is what we are trying to do tonight. So first I'm recommending uh, Cameron Banks for this position. Cameron attended the Shoshin Tech in Billerica, where he concentrated in masonry and tile setting. He's currently working as a laborer for Greener Group Excavation, and he has experience with landscaping, as well as water and sewer service installations. So with that, I'm recommending uh, Cameron for the position of water and sewer laborer. Sanchez, Mr. Segrino. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And with uh, John's recommendation, I appoint Cameron Banks to the position of water and sewer laborer in the Burlington Public Works Department and ask that the board waive its 15 day waiting period. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, the same. 4 0 0 waive. Thank you very much. The camera is actually here. Excellent. So with that, uh, we'll move to the second uh, recommendation, and we have uh, Daniel Matarazzo, not to be confused with Daniel Matarazzo. <laughs> uh, so uh, same, at the same time, interviews uh, were conducted by uh, Matt Davis and I uh, last week, and I'm recommending Dan for this position. Uh, Mr. Matarazzo attended a Shoshin Tech, and he concentrated in automotive. He's currently working as a plant mechanic at Benevento, in North Wilmington. He has experience over there in pump repairs, as well as plowing, sanding, and automotive repair. Uh, as of last week, he had a CDL permit. I think he's pursuing his CDL license. And I'm looking forward to uh, Daniel joining our water division as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. Mr. Sagarino. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. With John's recommendation, I appoint Daniel P. Matarazzo to the position of water and sewer laborer in the Burlington Public Works Department and ask that the board waive its 15-day waiting period. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. 4 0, zero. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is uh, 394. Uh, I'll ask that Mr. Sanchez come here to talk about. Uh, what's that? No, thank you. Oh, uh, the storm cleanup from <coughs> January 28th. Uh, John, I just wanted to let you know that I mentioned to Paul that usually when after we get a storm, you see all the negative comments and the negativity about the DPW and the roads. During that storm, all I saw was positive, positivity, and people were so uh, appreciative of the DPW. So, just wanted to at least acknowledge that and have you say a few words. 
So thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, so we 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 are very uh, thrilled to actually see that as well. And uh, I think the acknowledgement should go to uh, all of our departments, starting with uh, Kevin King, who actually manages the snow and ice operation. But uh, but we can't forget the entire Polar Works Department, Recreation Department, our contractors. I mean, it's a team effort uh, that we that we you know work for on an event like that one. Uh, but we can't forget you, uh, and this is one of those events in which I actually want to thank you for what you've done over the years. Uh, uh, you may not recall, but some of you may, that we had a very small team when it came to snowplowing within the town. So uh, during the last 15 years, we have increased the amount of trucks that we actually have within the town. Every truck that we pretty much order right now has a plow. Uh, we more than double our fleet for equipment. Uh, for plowing, and that has allowed us to provide a better service even though we don't have as many private plow contractors. Uh, it's, it's no secret that in the state, and actually throughout the United States, we're having a big problem hiring plowing contractors. Uh, we're missing quite a few from the number that we like to have. But the fact that through the years, through your group, as well as Ways and Means and Town Meeting, we've been able to grow our fleet to about 40 vehicles right now within the town compared to what we had before, which it was about 20, a little less than 20, but you can see that some of them were not as a fluid of a quality as the vehicles we're getting now. Uh, so that, that's what actually got us through, uh, through those storms and through this day as well. So, uh, and for that, I'm very grateful as well as my members of the department that now we have uh, just about every personnel that can get the hands on the equipment to go and plow, help us during a storm. So, so thank you for that. Thank you. I was gonna ask the board if they had any Comments you'd like to make, Mike? Uh, I, I agree with you, Jim. The roads, uh, you know, the, I follow along on the, the, the Facebook and so on and so forth, and the, and the uh, comments have been by and large uh, positive, other than the potholes on Route 3A. <laughs> which we have. Which everybody, is not our road. Everybody, we all know that. Which that is I'm not, not our, our road. We're not responsible for that. But um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, kudos uh, to uh, everybody involved, like you say. It's, 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 yeah. uh, it's a team effort. Thank you. Mr. Priest? Yeah, it's it's great to see residents, you know, speaking well of, you know, something online <laughs> for once, uh, you know, and, um, you know, to be able to be out on the roads safely um, is obviously crucial to, you know, the economy and us getting around town. And um, it's, um, it's great when you can cross over a town line and know that you've entered Burlington just because the roads are, are cleaner. Um, so obviously just a huge thank you. Mr. Hogan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, the, the, this is one of the the many things that you and we in the town and the team do that aren't necessarily headline news. Uh, it's not necessarily the stuff that people are talking about when they go to the supermarket in the middle of July. But this is the kind of stuff that we do, and when we do it right, it, it turns out right, and the people do notice, and they do appreciate it. So thank you and the team. John, I just have a quick question. Sure. Uh, did you have something to say? I didn't mean to uh, no, I will certainly pass that to the team. Like I said, this is this is more than than, than just uh, you, you know one person or one group. It's actually the entire department that that comes out and, and helps her with these events. It's all hands on deck. So, so I'll pass it on to that. My question is: I know we're working on the new new uh, stage two or phase two of DPW. Did having that new facility impact or help improve? how we did the snow removal. In other words, did the new, having a new facility like we have now, did that add to how, the positivity, I guess? So uh, uh, obviously the employees are extremely grateful to see uh, the building under construction. Uh, and, and we personally in the DPW are very grateful with the rec department right now. We are actually sharing very tight quarters with the rec and uh, we pretty much took over half of the facility so we can keep our trucks indoors. Uh, and that's crucial to what we do. I mean, when we had a storm like what we had last week, uh, not just the 28th, but actually the Friday with all the ice and rain and all of that, we have to keep that equipment indoors. If we get that salt wet, then you'll not be able to get it out of that truck. So of course, this is, is great improvements, and we're gonna see even more of that when, when we have the new facility. And then the longevity of the equipment as well. I mean, uh, our equipment already lasts about 20 years, which is, more than most communities, I can tell you that. Uh, and we'll squeeze every year out of whatever we own. So absolutely, yes, it's helpful. Thank so thank you. Thank you. Mr. 
Mr. Sagru, any, any comments? No, I just want to add, and I think John's brought this up uh, many times before, with the shortage of contractors, uh, we have enough personnel in-house to get the job done. It just may take us a little bit longer uh, than it has in previous years. So we appreciate uh, all the residents' patience. And uh, we had intended on Kevin Keene to be here tonight with John, but Unfortunately, the, the crew was out for another 24 hours uh, over the past day uh, handling the storm yesterday. Uh, it was sort of a long, slow one, right? Uh, but right. still required a lot of attention to the roads over a long period of time. So they were getting some uh, much needed rest and uh, couldn't couldn't be here with us tonight. John, on behalf of the board, please thank your uh, crew for all they do for, for this town. I certainly do that, and thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Um, Item number 395, our appointment to the scholarship committee, Mr. Sagarino. Sure, just uh, to give the board an update, uh, about three years ago, um, the town meeting uh, voted to reconstitute and, and restart up the town checkoff box scholarship fund. Uh, at that time, uh, the program had been um, absorbed by the other town scholarship fund, uh, the name of which what do we call that? Community Scholarship. Community Fund. Scholarship Foundation. And at that time, we reestablished the program. Uh, we appointed uh, six members to that committee. And they just did a wonderful job in order to sort of build up that program t uh, from scratch. Uh, they recently um, had reached out to me and let me know that five of the six members are already are happy with their accomplishments on what they built there and they're ready to move on to their next challenges and that we'd be looking for some more members. Uh, one of the members, uh, Sheila Fitzpatrick, uh, has graciously agreed to stay on for a one-year term uh, and we will bring that to you in June. Uh, that will allow her to transfer all the knowledge uh, that the committee has gained over the past three years and be able to pass it along to um, a new committee of new residents. Uh, so tonight uh, for you, uh, the board has uh, two, interest resident, two interested residents who have submitted uh, for the position to be on the scholarship committee. Uh, we would request uh, that the appointments be made as of July 1st. Um, and to both of these uh, residents to be to the three-year term so we can start to stagger these boards so that they're not all up on the same on, at the same time frame. Uh, so we have two candidates within your packet uh, for your consideration. And I'm hopeful that if we get these folks appointed tonight, that they, they don't start until yeah. July 1st, but hopefully they can spend some time uh, watching the current scholarship fund committee uh, do their work as they, as they get through uh, the application process and the awarding of the scholarships through the spring. Thank you. Uh, quick question on the appointments. This is... Is this a waiver situation? Or? Pardon me? Is, is this something where we have to waive, waive uh, vote to waive or waiting? You, you can throw it in there. Throw it in there? Yeah. I, I'm not sure if it's necessary. I think that's more of um, for, for the appointments Hired. that I make. So. so I see the name of uh, Jane Lynch and Pooja. Pooja. Um, did you want, uh, Jane? Did you want to introduce yourself to the board? Are you on, on here? Jane? Jane? We'll start with Jane. Hello. Hi, Jane. Do you just want to introduce yourself to the board? Um, sure. Hi, my name is Jane Lynch. I'm currently a sixth grade earth science teacher at the Marshall Simons Middle School. Prior to that, I was a third grade teacher at Pine Glen for 12 years. And I know that Mr. Preston had a big influence over this committee. Of my kids have reaped the benefits and being a teacher in town, I, I know the kids and I know what qualifications would suit a scholarship recipient. So I feel very qualified for this position. I also had given out a scholarship at scholarship night for many years through the town recycling program that I brought in um, to the town nine years ago that are all at all the schools. So. I know what it takes to, to look through applications and I've done it myself. And as I said, I've awarded six scholarships through my, my own scholarship program um, with, the, with the benefit of the town recycling programs. Thank you, Jane. You're uh, welcome. Pooja, would you like to introduce yourself? 
Yes, uh, my name is Pooja Singla, as you all know. I have been in this town for the last five years, and um, I have been involved with the Burlington Breakfast Rotary Club that I was president of for one year and president-elect, of course. And then after that, I am the assistant governor at the district level. We do run a scholarship program at our Burlington Breakfast Rotary Club that we raise funds and then we yeah. uh, select the high school students. Uh, we, they write essays and we evaluate their credentials and how they are involved in the community. Um, that's how we evaluate their applications and provide scholarship to the high school students. And um, the year before, we also provided the scholarship to the middle school students as well. Um, outside that, we do the Shashin Tech School. Uh, we do provide a little amount of scholarship to them, the people who are not going to the college, um, and then um, who are, it's like a startup money for them uh, or some any other technical um, programs that they want to do so that they can be into the business uh, of their vocational studies that they have done. Um, so that's how we have been doing the scholarship uh, through the um, Burlington Breakfast Rotary Club and getting some grants from the district as well. So I, I think uh, I can evaluate that and I can fit in well with the committee as well. Thank you very much, Pooja. Uh, two very uh, good candidates for, for this committee. Um, can we waive them both in one motion or do they have to be separate? Um, I think it, we, we typically do the appointments separate. All right. Uh, so if you just want to do them separately and then, uh, right. Pooja, can I just have you repeat your last name so I get it correct? Yeah. Singla, S as in Sam, I N G L A. And it's on my screen too. Uh, okay. So. Yeah, I just can't, I just see, can't see, see the screen from where I'm at, but all right. So there we go. All right, that being said, I'll be looking for a motion to uh, waive the 15-day waiting period for uh, Jane Lynch. Just clarification. Yep. We're making the appointment, correct? Yes. Uh, All right, three, so we should make the term. appointment and then say... Okay. So I'll be looking for a motion to make the appointment and waive the 15-day waiting period. To the three-year term effective July 1st. Correct. Correct. Okay. Mr. Renny's made that motion. Second. And Mr. Hogan seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed of same? 400. I'll be looking for a similar motion for Pooja Singla. I'll make motion for Pooja Singla to uh, appointment to the scholarship committee for a three year term beginning July 1st. July 1st. And, and to waive? I can waive the 15 day. Okay, very good. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed of staying? 400. Congratulations, Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next uh, item on the agenda is number 396. It's approval for Relay for Life. Nikki, I am not even going to attempt to <laughs> pronounce your last name. So please introduce yourself, introduce to, yourself the board. to the board. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nikki Plazwich. I am the chair of Burlington Relay for Life. Um, tonight, I am applying for a permit for our Relay for Life of 2022 event at the Burlington Town Common um, for Saturday, June 18th from 2 to 9 p.m. Would you like me to explain a little bit about what Relay for Life is about, or do you all have an understanding? Well, we're familiar with it, but for the uh, people watching the meeting, can you give us a, a brief description of what it is? I sure can. So, American Cancer Society has been hosting Relay for Life. Um, for a little over 10 years now in Burlington. Um, we traditionally would have our Burlington Relay for Life event at the Burlington High School track and field. Traditionally, it would be an overnight event. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID-19, um, the past two years, we've held our event virtually. Um, we are now hoping in 2022 that we can have another in-person event. Our American Cancer Society rep um, representative, Brianna Abruzzisi, has been helping me coordinate getting this event in person. She had reached out to someone from Burlington High School um, and we were advised that there would be a project going on at the school during the time of our event. Um, so we are now looking to have our in-person event 
in the town um, common instead. Um, of course, we understand that we couldn't have a traditional overnight event um, at the town common. Um, so we're looking to try to keep our traditions as close as possible um, and have something that would be you know, comparable to truck day or pride day that would be held in the common. Thank you, Nikki. Uh, uh, Nick, have, have you talked with, uh, or Lynn, have they talked with anybody to confirm that both that and the rain date are available on the common? Yep, I, I spoke with Lynn, yes. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay. Mr. Priest? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, um, obviously, you know, make sure that all your T's are crossed, your I's are dotted with regards to making sure police are notified and all that great stuff. Uh, will they need porta potties at all? I, know, I, I keep asking this question as a fun. No, no, that's a valid question. <laughs> Uh, as opposed to the alternative. No, it's a very right. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> the alternative. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm looking at Lynn, but you know, anyone who feels feels the need to answer this question, Nikki, have you uh, considered that? Talked about it? Discussed it with anyone? We have not discussed the porta potties. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I was more looking to get this situated before I had moved on to the next steps. Um, but with the duration that we're having it, we're hoping that people can kind of just stop in and come and go um, and have it be a little more free flowing than our traditional event. Um, like I said, it was an overnight event. So people would usually stay for the entire duration. Um, but we're just hoping that this would be a little more laid back and people could come and go as they please. Um, but if the board would prefer us to have porta potties or some other um, utility set up. I'd be happy to, to coordinate that. Yeah, I mean, just, I, I guess my general, you know, uh, question is just and comment is just make sure that you're working with Lynn and the office staff to make sure that all the logistics are, are buttoned up. Uh, if it's not porta potty, let's see if we got the, the the annex open or something. Just because I know from two to nine, if someone's there for an hour or two hours. Uh, you know, to have to, you know, get in their car and go find a facility, come back. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to have any, any extra complications uh, and, and to make your event, you know, more, uh, more, you know, I, I guess, user friendly. Um, I think it's a, it's a great event. Um, I have no issue with it, but I just want to make sure from a logistics standpoint, everything's all buttoned up. That's all. I agree. Thank you. Ronnie? Uh, no, no, thank you. I'm also, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with the. Uh... I'm fine with the event on the comment, no problem. Uh, Nikki, I concur with uh, Selectman Priest. Uh, I think the porta potties is a good idea. Um, you don't want people leaving, coming back, you know, having to find another parking spot. And we prefer not to have them use the public safety buildings um, because just because of the nature of those uh, the business. So I, I highly recommend you. Uh, in fact, I'm going to ask you to look at, at Porta potties. I think Brendan might be able to help her out. Yeah, there's an event the weekend before, so I'm sure we can connect her with Brendan um, on how those are being put up, how long they're staying. Ask if they can stay the extra week for her event. You get that, Nikki? That would be great. Thank you. Okay. Nick, um, you want to follow? Yeah, no, I was going to make the motion for all right there. Um, all right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make the motion that we approve the Relay for Life event at the Common uh, with a event date of 6-18-2022 and 2-9 p.m. with a rain date of 6-25-2022. Second. Move and second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed of saying 4 zero, 0 So, Nikki, you'll work with Lynn on this? I will. Thank you all so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck, Nick. Thank you. Item 397 is a continuation of an opened public hearing. Um, just want to make sure we're okay on the time. Yep. Um, Joshua, are you the one speaking on this? Or who's the representative, who's the representative uh, uh, that's going to speak on this? Uh, good evening. Um, can folks hear me okay? Yes. yes sir. Okay, great. Uh, wonderful. Thank you. Um, Mr. Uh, Town Administrator, as well as uh, Mr. Chair and all of the members of the board. Uh, this is a continuance. Um, we had last met with the board back in January, uh, January 10th uh, of this year. And um, what my client Eversource is seeking is an earth moving permit. Um, one of the suggestions uh, from uh, one of the members of the select board was that uh, they wanted to see the, uh, the outcome of the planning board 
um, as well as uh, find out what, uh, if any, additional landscaping improvements uh, might be provided in connection with the request that had been uh, made by the planning board when we had met with them in connection with the special permit and site plan uh, review application. So uh, I will, I'm happy to report that since we met with the select board, uh, we did have our second meeting with the planning board um, we provided an update uh, with respect to the landscape drawing uh, and layout uh, that we had initially submitted. And we had also updated the project scope uh, with respect to the type of fencing. Um, the planning board unanimously approved uh, both the site plan review application as well as our application for the special permits that we're seeking. Um, just to give a really brief highlight of the changes that were made uh, the landscaping that we, uh, we, we Eversource's uh, landscape architect uh, devised uh, some plans that uh, provided a couple of options with respect to landscaping. And uh, essentially the landscaping uh, that was, um, that the planning board had selected uh, enhances the landscaping on both sides of the uh, property, on both sides of the substation. And it, it is, will be very prominent uh, and along Middlesex Turnpike. Uh, contains a, a, a variety of different species of plantings um, and a combination of both deciduous and non-deciduous plantings. Uh, so this was by the guidance of um, not only the planning board and the chair of the planning board, but also uh, the staff. Uh, we worked very closely with Kristen Kasner and her team. Um, we're very uh, grateful for, for their guidance on this. Um, the other component uh, that was a modification uh, included, includes the fencing. Uh, Eversource's initial application with respect to, uh, to, the, to the planning board uh, contemplated the addition of chain link fencing that's, that's currently there now. Um, as I'm sure everyone knows, the substation is, a, um, is an unmanned substation and it is secured with chain link fencing, varying in height. Um, uh, Eversource had proposed as part of its project, which is, as a reminder, is the installation of a uh, a temporary mobile transformer and circuit switcher in the rear portion of the property. Uh, Eversource had um, contemplated uh, with the expansion of the yard to accommodate for that, uh, to install similar chain link fence. Um, so what Eversource agreed to do, however, uh, through recommendation by the, or, or advice by the planning board and guidance by the planning board is to uh, replace the entirety of the fencing. So rather than just um, installing new chain link fencing to accommodate the rear portion of the yard uh, to accommodate the project, Eversource agree has agreed to install uh, new, what's, what's referred to as black powder coated fencing. Uh, so we'll, it will be black in color and uh, which is more, uh, more aesthetically pleasing. And uh, Eversource will replace um, not only the rear, but the entirety of all of the perimeter fencing. Um, so new fencing, new landscaping to enhance the site. And um, uh, I, I think I can safely say that the planning board is, is pleased. Uh, so I, that's my report to the select board. And um, again, we are seeking from the select board uh, an earth moving permit uh, under their general, under the town's general ordinances. Thank you, Joshua. Um, this is a continued public hearing. Uh, Mr. Ryan, I'll start with you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm I'm very impressed with the improvements that uh, that they've agreed to. Uh, it addresses uh, my concerns that I had. Uh, apparently, satisfies the entire planning board as well. So I'm ready to uh, I'm ready to uh, move forward on this. Cool. Uh, Mr. Hogan? No, I'm good. No, thank you. Uh, I concur with what Selectman Ryan said. I'm very happy with the aesthetic improvements, and uh, I think that's all we want. This board was asking for. Just because it's such a bit uh, a, 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 a visible focal area and visible area, we wanted to at least you know see if we could make it a little bit better for Burlington. Uh, Mr. Priest, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, thank you for taking the feedback and the time to uh, consider what the planning board and this board was suggesting. Um, I have no questions. Um, but the one thing that I think that wasn't answered, but that we can, you know, I'll, I'll place a contingency in the motion I'm about to make was the, uh, where the dirt is going and uh, how it's getting there. So um, 
If there's no further discussion, I'm happy to make the motion that we approve. Um, close it. Close it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> public hearing, man. Uh, make a motion that we close the public hearing. A second. Okay. Um, uh, should I? Should I yes. Was public hearing before I close it? Should I? All right. Before we close the public hearing, is there any input, comments, or questions from the public? Being none, now I'll look for a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Okay, moved and seconded to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero to close the public hearing. Okay. Okay. Now that that's closed, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a motion that we approve um, earth moving uh, permit for 64A Middlesex Turnpike uh, with the condition that uh, before, or I guess once it's established, we are notified. Uh, of both the facility and route uh, that the dirt will be going to and uh, how it's getting there. It's a conditional motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor of the motion Nick suggested? Aye. 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 Opposed the same. 400 to approve the earth movement permit. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you very much. Um, appreciate it. Have a good evening. Okay. okay. Item 398 is a continued public hearing. hearing. I believe we'll be looking at Attorney Fonsworth, if I'm not mistaken. Attorney Fonsworth, are you? Yes, I am here. Okay, can you update the board on the status? Sure. I sent in a letter, and um, finally, it, they reached agreement on the lease assignment and amendment. Uh, again, as you know, it was a three party. Um, endeavor since the landlord had the lease with Del Frisco's, but you know they needed to negotiate out of that, and my client Strega to take over the lease. Um, the other complication is that both the landlord's lenders and my client's lenders needed to approve of these documents, and there's guarantors involved, and their financials needed to be reviewed. So, um, you know, there were a lot of people involved, so that kind of just resulted in delay, but I am pleased to report that the agreement is final, so we can now move forward and, um, you know, put this application to transfer the license from Del Frisco's to Strega Burlington and uh, get that before you in uh, a public hearing. Thank you, Attorney Farnsworth. Um, Mr. Sagarino, would I be, it be correct to probably Continue this to our next meeting so that we can get all that information. Yeah, I, I was going to say, uh, Attorney Farnsworth, is the 28th too soon or? The 28th is for your next meeting. That's fine. I mean, you can definitely, you know, keep our feet to the fire and, you know, put this on for a continuation and we can report. Hopefully we'll have an application. So, you know, maybe you, you'll be able to, you know, take this public hearing off. Because this was all about the status. I mean, you'll need to put a, a new public hearing for the liquor license transfer. Well, I guess I will, I want to, may ask this question then, okay? But rather than just get another update. Right, exactly. Week, I was thinking the same thing. What? Do you have a date? You, uh, March, April or something? When, when do you, how much time do you need to get your application, you think? Well, um, I was hoping. Yeah, I was hopeful we could do it by the end of the month, but if you want to, if today's the 214, if you want to just definitely give us a month and, and we'll get that application in, that would be great. March 14? March 14. 14 right, how does March 14 sound? Turning yep. Fine. yep, that's fine. Right, so six. On or after 6 p.m. So this being a public hearing, I'll be looking for a motion to continue it to March 14, on or after 6 p.m. All right, I'll move it. Moved by uh, Select Second. Second by Mr. Hogan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 400. March 14th, honor after 6 p.m. Attorney Farnsworth. Perfect. Thank you again for your continued okay. patience. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hey, item 399 is a new public hearing. It's for a great location, Cambridge Network Solutions, Relton Mall Road at South Bedford Street. Um, we don't need to make a motion to open the public hearing. I'm going to open the public hearing, right? 
make sure I get that. So public hearing is open. Uh, do we have the applicant? Actually, no, we also have to have the notice read. Uh, so we have to approve the notice as written or read into the record. The advertisement, yes. Yes, so that's what we, that, we, that we have to vote on, right? Yes. Okay. So do I have a motion to approve the notice as written or read into the record? So moved. Seconded by Mr. Hogan. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Four zero zero. Okay. Is the applicant here with us? Does not appear today, unless it's that two. So, do we have anybody representing Cambridge Network Solutions? <clears throat> or CI Engineering for that? Yeah, I think they're doing yeah. all. I think they're doing all three of these actually. No, no takers. We're doing three ninety nine and four hundred. Yeah, we're supposed to be doing two of them, I think. Yes. Oh. Hey, only one. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we have to continue. This. Absolutely, sir. All right, so I'll be looking for a motion to continue um, the public. Or actually, we haven't even, the public hearing has been open. I'll be looking for a motion to continue the public hearing for the new grand location, Mall Road, South Beverly Street, to. On or after February 28th at 6 p.m.? Yep. We have that motion. So moved. We have second. Check. Uh, made and seconded to uh, continue to February 28th on or after 6 p.m. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. 400. Okay. Item 400. I'm not going to, I'll ask, I'll ask for the record. Is there anybody here representing Cambridge Network Solution or to speak on the new grant of location? At 66 Burlington Mall. The point where we should open the public hearing is yeah. 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 All right. I'll open the same way and then right. so I'll open the public hearing and I'll be looking for motion to have the notice as uh, notice as written or read into the record. All right. Move, uh, move and seconded to have the notice as written into the record. All right. Now public hearing is open. And anybody representing Cambridge Network Solutions or the new grant location at 66 Burlington Mall Road? There being none, I'll be looking for a motion to continue this public hearing to February 28th on or after 6 p.m. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. 400 to continue item 400 to February 28th on or after 6 p.m. Okay, item 40, 401, it's a, it's a public hearing, but we close the public hearing of this. If the, anybody on the board believes it's necessary to re, we could always reopen if deemed necessary. But this is a continued small cell installation right away, one Burlington Mall Road. Mr. Perry. Good evening, I'm here. Yep, hey. I'm here. Okay. We can hear you. Terrific. My apologies. I don't seem to be able to connect to video. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the town's uh, council in this matter, Donna Brewer, is in the virtual uh, meeting as well. Okay. Uh, earlier this afternoon, um, I forwarded over a decision uh, with the conditions that the board had put on it uh, to Mr. Perry for his um for his review so i guess that's at the point of the in the hearing i think we sort of went through the need for the facility at our last hearing and uh i can see now that uh the town's rf engineer dave maxson is also in the room if the board has any questions of him but uh that's just sort of an update as to where we are on the, on this particular thing. okay and now that i see mr perry and hello attorney brewer and david maxson um again if, if any questions but we don't need to have them present anything at this point. Do any members of the board have anything they want to discuss about this agenda? So, uh, right. I, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll be quite honest with you. I don't recall what the sticking point was and why that is. Were you here? Were you with that meeting? I was here. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
But anyway, I, I, I have no questions. No. Mr. Hogan? Uh, I was just curious, uh, Paul, what did you go over today that made you feel comfortable that everything is all set? Oh, just from watching the proceedings and, and reading the backup that came from uh, Mr. Maxson, uh, there was a resident who had posed a few questions about the coverage areas. And I think uh, Mr. Maxson did a pretty good memo just to sort of explain um, why he feels as though the information provided has proven the need for um, the, the location. And will that information be part of the record? Yes. I'm good, Mr. Chairman. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Paul, don't don't uh, demean Mr. Maxson's uh, report by calling it a memo. It's six pages. <laughs> sure. uh, no, I, you know, first off, Mr. Maxson, thank you for taking the time uh, to walk through all of that and put into writing, uh, you know, explanations. It's greatly appreciated. I think, especially with a topic such as this, where a lot of folks are coming into, you know, the uh, the conversation, you know, with with limited information. Um, you know, are asking a lot of questions and we very much appreciate you being there to uh, answer them for us uh, and provide, you know, insight and guidance where we're appropriate. Um, my only question uh, came to mind after the meeting, uh, which is uh, when we first did our first, uh, you know, small cell location, um, when we approved it, we also chose alternate locations if for some reason that first location was not going to be viable. Uh, I feel like we need to do that here as well. Should there be any issues? Because otherwise, um, Attorney Perry, you're going to wind up back here in front of us. Should that first location for some reason not work out, and if we're going to make this as efficient as possible, perhaps we should take a moment and consider maybe one or two alternate locations within the proximity of the first. Thank you, Mr. Priest. Uh, Mr. Attorney Perry, has that been discussed at all? For example, yeah. If you okay. Yeah. Can I share my can I share my screen? That might be the easiest way to. Okay. Sure thing. Uh, let's see if I can do so. Do you have the picture? Up? Do, do you have the picture up? It's trying to load. Oh, there it is. Can you see that now? We see two partial photos. You see something called View East from Burlington Mall Road. Um, yes. Scroll down a little more. With a, see he's trying to scroll. scroll up. Scroll up. Yeah, right there. So uh, we are proposing to put the uh, standalone pole in this area. Uh, the policy requires that it be equidistant between the two streetlights. Uh, an alternative. Uh, Location, if we did run into a problem, would, would again be equidistance between the next two street lights. So, as long as we're within this right of way here in the median strip, um, coverage wise, we're fine. Uh, so, if from a constructability standpoint, we can't make it at the proposed location, we can certainly locate it equidistant between the next two light poles. And there is another light pole beyond this one. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Sarina, does that need to be incorporated into this approval of some sort of like the alternative site? Yes, I think we lettered them the last time, Mr. Chairman. We called the preferred site site A, and then the secondary site was B, and we, we put some sort of order to them um, in that in that regard. Mr. Perry, uh, uh, Attorney Perry, I assume you remember that from the last time with the one down the street? I, I I do, and it was because we we're at a four corner. So I guess you could word it in such a way to say either at the proposed location or equidistant between the two existing lights, uh, street lights uh, to the west of the proposed location. I think we do need to get, you know, equidistant between the street lights. Um, or we could, I mean, we could add a location B, but that's what it would, that's what it would be. So you, you could certainly describe the other location. Uh, and, and both of them work for RF from a radio frequency and capacity standpoint. Okay. Like, well, yeah, I, I was going to say the, the the previous application, you'll recall, we had we had a couple of impediments here. We had crosswalk, we had bus stops, and other things. And I think that was the why we asked for some alternate sites. I don't think we have any of those impediments on this application. In this location. Okay. Do we? So do yeah, we? I think the only. I, 
I think the only impediment would be if we ran into a constructability issue. So, you know, I don't think there were any, there was some drainage pipes and stormwater covers over on the uh, previous site that we did. I don't, you know, see that situation here, but, you know, rather than come back, uh, as I said, I did talk to the radio frequency engineer. We can, we can move to the west uh, between the other two street lights. We do not want to go down, you know, into the, uh, into the traffic area down below. So, you know, west between the two street lights would be sufficient to describe the location. If we run into a construction problem, we can discuss with the town administrator and go to that alternative location. All right, um, attorney uh, Harry, is it, can we have that noted as preferred site and alternative site for the record? Well, I'd say the preferred site's what we applied for. It would just be a matter of, you know, phrasing it so that if that wasn't a viable location, we could move due west in between the two existing street lights to. That's good. All right. Um, gentlemen, if I can speak, I, I'm a little concerned that this might constitute new evidence that should be part of the public hearing that was closed. To, to be talking about a different site. Mm. So I, I would prefer okay, the, the easiest is just to stick with the, with the record that we have already for the current site. I do agree that the reason we had alternate alternate sites before is because we had concerns about the original site, which we don't have now. Thank, thank you, Attorney Brewer. Mr. Chairman, we, yes. we, I think we added some language in the previous one uh, that they, uh, the site B, for example, that we chose within plus or minus 10 or 15 feet in case they can't run into some pond of it or they can't run into something in the, in the road. And we gave them a little bit of flexibility. I think it was 10 or 15 feet from the proposed site. Sure. So site, site the, the preferred location uh, plus or minus 10 feet. More or less, right? Exactly. All right. Due, and I would condition that as due to constructability issues, as Mr. Perry was saying. Perry, uh, your thoughts on that? I'm fine with that. Okay, so I think we uh, pretty much have discussed this issue enough. All right. Mr. Sagarino. Uh, Mr. Chairman, could I just read to the board the conditions that we're in in the draft? Certainly. Uh, that, that we've talked about uh, to this point. All right, just give me a minute here. Uh, condition one, the applicant shall conform its installation to the plans and specifications set forth in its application and as further set forth in this discussion. Uh, number two, the pole shall be black in color and repainted as necessary. Uh, to main that, maintain that color in good condition. Uh, number three, the applicant shall comply with the annual recertification and affidavit requirements of paragraph three of the application policy for small cell wireless installations. Uh, number four, the applicant shall coordinate with the town department of public works and town engineering department to ensure that there are, is no disruption to any town equipment or street lights and no interference with the installation of new street lights. The pole will be serviced by an electrical service separate from that of the town. The applicant will pay the town $500 for processing each annual recertification and $270 annually for the use of the public right of way. The applicant shall not replace or alter equipment permitted by this decision unless it files a new application and approval is obtained from the select board, unless the equipment is no longer functioning or is being replaced with the same or substantially similar equipment. Number eight, uh, the applicant shall respond within 30 calendar days to any requests by the select board or the code enforcement official uh, to verify that the emissions of the small wireless facility remain compliant with FCC standards uh, this request will be limited to once annually unless verification of emissions is required more frequently uh, due to a reasonable concern. 
to, fa to facilitate co-location on the pole, the applicant and the structure owner, Centerline, shall cooperate in providing for co-location of other carriers on the pole with reasonable modifications if necessary and potentially involving common use of antennas to the extent such co-location is both technologically feasible and consistent with the Burlington Small Wireless Facility Policy. If co-location is feasible, the intended additional carrier will apply for a permit from the select board as required by the town's bylaw and policies for small wireless facilities. Number 10, if at any time the facility is operating in violation of any safety code or health standard, the owner will cure the violation within a reasonable time based upon the severity of the risk, but in no case more than 30 calendar days from notification by the town, at which time, if not cured, the board reserves its right to, to reconsider this decision and any subsequent extension. And the last one is uh, number 11, the installation and maintenance of the pole shall not cause any disruption to nearby facilities and equipment. Okay. Mr. Perry, uh, uh, you concur with those conditions, correct? Uh, yes, Mr. S Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, Mr. Sagarino, do you want to add number 12 to be that the specific location of the pole may vary 10 to 15 feet uh, from the uh, position shown in the plans due to, um, if required by constructability issues. Could you add that to condition one? Uh, I'll just add it on as condition 12. Control. Yep. Okay, you, Donna. Got Very it. Good. Yep. Thank you, Donna. Yep. Okay. That being said, I'll be looking for motion to approve with those 12 conditions that Mr. Sagarino read into the record. The close vote here? We already did. We did, but still not close. Okay. Uh, then, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make the motion that we approve with the conditions as read uh, by Mr. Sagarino. Okay. Second. Second by Mr. Rennie. All those in favor of approving this application? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 4 zero, 0 Thank you, David. Thank you, Donna. And thank you, Mr. Patrick. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Good, good night, everybody. All right. Good night. Thanks. For two minutes, approval uh, minutes of January 10th. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes of January 10th, 2022. Thank you, Second. Mr. Second by Mr. Priest. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ab ab opposed? Abstain? 4 zero, zero. Um, Mr. Ryan, I'll start with you. Any subcommittee reports? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I um, nothing specific, but I'll tell you what, I, I, I am encouraged, um, it, you know, with, with the uh, strength of our economy here in Burlington during, throughout COVID, um, Paul's been sending us a number of news articles and so forth, uh, we're signing new tenants, uh, almost on a, a, a monthly basis here in town. We've, uh, Huge, we have huge, big, big uh, uh, global type type tenants that are still coming here to Burlington. It's uh, um, it, it's very rewarding to see that our efforts uh, through zoning uh, efforts through Melissa's office, the economic having that that office uh, Water. operating and, and the connection to MWRA and um, it's really proven to. Um, you know, make us even stronger here in Burlington, you know, uh, and I'm sure the uh, hotel business is going to, even though they're lagging, I'm sure they're, 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 they're going to catch up uh, at some point uh, soon. But um, the, 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 it's it just been encouraging to me and, uh, you know, the doom and gloom that we all thought we might experience during this uh, pandemic is uh, certainly not, not uh, slowing us down here in Burlington. So just, uh, yeah, just my uh, observation and what it is. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Thanks. Mr. Logan? Uh, yeah, I agree, Michael. Uh, I was in the office talking to Melissa the other day, and, um, you know, I was just telling her how she made us look smarter by creating that position and hiring her. <laughs> yeah. 
That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Hogan. Mr. Priest. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, a hundred times yes to what uh, both Mr. Runny and Mr. Hogan are saying. Um, you know, Paracel, Altaview, right? These are uh, new corporate residents of Burlington. Um, you know, and it, you know, it's, it's very easy, I think, for us to say, um, and I was going to talk about this anyways, so. <laughs> um, it's, it's very easy for us to say, oh, wow, how great, right? These businesses, these businesses that are already in Cambridge, Boston, they're, they're moving out to us, right? Uh, but we also should recognize the global impact that has on our community. Um, the more life sciences, the more healthcare, the more med device, the more bioscience companies that call Burlington their home, the more it puts us on the map on a global scale. Um, and that needs to be recognized because, you know, that means that everything that we're doing is now amplified. Um, and it's wonderful, it truly is. Uh, and that actually leads me to my second thing, which is uh, ISAC. Uh, so just dovetailing one to the other, as we become a more visible uh, community on a national and global scale, so too do our threats uh, from a you know digital uh, computer um, attack. And so all of the efforts that we've made in the last couple of years to establish a cybersecurity policy, uh, all of the efforts that ISAC is currently doing, working with Paul and our you know, IT department, um, will hopefully pay dividends in protecting us moving forward. Uh, and I know that ISAC is currently working uh, very hard uh, through IT and with IT to have conversations with Paul and the directors of the various departments who are all very much on board, um, you know, and engaging uh, in ways that we could help protect uh, our town uh, from attacks. So um, just a great, a great thing there. And just, you know, I wanted to kind of dovetail that whole picture uh, into one thing. But that's all I have for updates. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Priest. Again, I, I couldn't agree with you gentlemen more. Um, economies are, I guess you could say, trickle down. If things go bad, all the ancillary businesses, the surrounding businesses, the town, they all go bad as well. And I, but in Burlington, the positivity continues. Having these new businesses will, you know, again, vital, revitalize the hotels, revitalize all the, uh, the restaurants we have. Um, the, the advantage we have with, you know, of course people would say, well, that means more traffic, but when it's a life science business, life science business works, some of them work 24 seven, they don't work a typical business day or have a typical business schedule. So there, you might have people coming in at two in the morning, three in the morning. So that, tra that will get offset because they work not a normal business schedule, I guess. But again, the positivity continues. Uh, we'll probably be taking bids for a, a statue to Melissa on the, on the comet at some point. But uh, <laughs> she's done an unbelievable job. Um, and that's it. Um, Town Administrator's report. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll just dovetail a little bit on that. I mean, it is exciting when we get uh, the news of companies moving their headquarters from Cambridge to Burlington. A uh, couple in the past couple of weeks. and. You know, it really, it really was a team effort town-wide. Um, Kristen Kastner got the ball rolling with the uh, effort to become Mass Bio Platinum. She held a community forum. Uh, town meeting has supported us every step along the way. Uh, the board uh, bought into the idea of, of creating the position of Economic Development Director. Town meeting supported us very strongly on that. Uh, we've been working to bring clean water, which... Um, both our residents and our, our businesses need to town uh, very diligently over the past few years. And uh, town meeting, again, has supported all of our rezoning efforts on properties uh, to make them more attractive to life science. And our Board of Health has developed lab safety regula regulations that have become the model for su suburban communities here in Massachusetts. Uh, we get calls uh, from other towns all the time that they want to talk to our our, our Board of Health and our Health Health, health Department to uh, sort of understand the regulations that they created and they've become literally the go-to model for any town that's interested in uh, lab safety. So it really was a team effort all around and uh, you know really excited. I was starting to pay some dividends and uh, we're looking forward to what, what the future brings, brings here to Burlington. 
Uh, the next item I have, Mr. Chairman, uh, the ambulance billing discussion uh, for any interested resident or senior uh, that's interested in learning how the town's ambulance billing system works. Uh, this, this event was originally scheduled and postponed due to the COVID surge, uh, but the date is Thursday, February 24th at 2 p.m. at the Council on Aging Building. Uh, there'll be representatives from the COA, uh, Burlington Fire Department, and Armstrong Ambulance, and they'll be able to discuss ambulance billing, how it works, and answer any residents' questions that they may have had about the process over the years. Town meeting, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Uh, hybrid or in-person, whatever your preference is. If, if you want a hybrid login, please reach out to Amy, and she'll get you set up uh, so you could access the meeting on WebEx. Great. I hope we don't have a conflict with bingo um, when we're talking about that ambulance billing. Oh. So. <laughs> you tell them, Mike. Not for me. The conflict will be with the bingo player. <laughs> you have a, a ride on your hands, Paul. <laughs> We've been working with Maj on that, so hopefully. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sagarino. Any old business or new business for the board? Okay, it doesn't look like it, but I, oh, actually we do have a citizen out there. Anybody here for citizen's time? I think, I think Brenda might have been here for that, yeah. Small right. Um, so nobody here for citizen's time? Okay, that being yeah, said, that's the end of the agenda. agenda. Looking for a motion to um, adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. 400. Meetings adjourned.